Hey everybody, this is Luis from Side Effects, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about some uh, simple texturing techniques inside of Houdini using Mega Scans. So in this talk, I'm going to cover this demo that we did, which I did another talk giving the overview of all the different components that we did. This is a slightly deeper dive in some of the texturing techniques that we used in that project. And then we're going to go into just a couple of simple tricks on doing some basic texturing inside of Houdini. Um, there's really two methods that we can do and we can use our compositing based approach, which is using the COPS network. And then there's a material based approach, which is using the material network. And then the Q and A's will be in the comment section. So feel free to drop me a line. If there's anything that you guys like me to clarify a little bit. So Brimstone was this racing game that we did. Um, like I mentioned before, there's another tutorial or GDC booth presentation that I did that covers it in a little bit more detail, but the idea is we wanted to have a playable demo um, that was Houdini first and basically everything that you see was generated inside of Houdini or used in Quixel's Megascans library. And we wanted this to be a, a central piece of work that we could uh, leverage in multiple presentations. So I've given two talks on the subject. I know Rob Stauffer has um, one talk that uses an asset and then Ari has another one that also pings on it. So the idea is that we try to make one project and then have multiple lines of education coming out of it. And this was a partnership with Quixel. They were very nice to kind of open up the Megascan library for us, as well as lend us their, one of their lead artists, Victor, um, who came in and did an awesome polish pass and lighting at the end of it. So I'm going to play back uh, a video of what that looked like. So you can see here, it's a, it's a sci-fi racing game. It was all done inside of Unreal with Houdini and Houdini Engine. And then all of the texturing was done um, using the Megascans library um, as the, the kind of source assets for those. And um, we did a lot of different techniques. There's a whole other talk that we do a little bit of a breakdown. We're hoping that we'll get to do a masterclass on this where we kind of go even deeper into some of the, the, the workflows that we did. And there's everything here from um, cutting terrain, uh, displacing geometry, um, optimizing meshes, rigid body destruction, um, texturing, which we'll cover today. There's a lot of kit bashing that Victor did here in this cave specifically. It looks really great. Um, the crowds were generated inside of COPS. The only bit that wasn't um, textured using Megascan was the cities in the background, but for the most part, everything else was. As I said before, there's two main kind of texturing approaches inside of Houdini. And I'll leave the caveat here that this is not a substance replacement at all. Um, substance does awesome things and we love working with those guys. This is just kind of compositing materials together. Um, Houdini is more than capable of doing that bit. So we'll start off with our compositing network. So COP's been around for years and the idea here is that it's um, basically, it was designed as a compositor for the film industry, but because you, the basics of it is you're just taking two images and you're layering them together, that's very kind of, it lends itself to doing some kind of texturing um, with it. So this is what COPS looks like. Um, there's a lot of different nodes, but at its core, it's really just taking different planes and kind of merging them together. We have lots of nodes that you can use, so there's a lot of built-in functionality. A lot of it was built... Um, specifically for kind of movie compositing, but we're adding a couple of nodes here and there to kind of aid with some material type workflows. Um, the nice thing about COPS is that it has this concept of image planes. So basically an image can have multiple essentially layers inside of it, and these can be arbitrarily named. So we can piggyback them and instead of having like color, alpha, normal, which is essentially your render passes, we can hijack them and use um, albedo, normal, roughness, metallic, AO, and your traditional PBR material layers. So by kind of storing your data in that format, you are easily allowed to do uh, mixing and blending of them together, which is really what the, the core of the, the texturing inside of Houdini is. It's really taking a material that you've created somewhere, and then you're just layering them together based on masks. So here's a, a couple of examples where I have this blue material and this red material. And then I'm using an alpha to kind of blend between both of them. And you can see I can extract out the albedo roughness and metallic out of each of those. So here's an example of the Jersey barrier that Rob goes a little bit deeper into how we're doing. But the idea is that you just have masks that you generated. So in this case, we only have two really. Um, we have a black one, which is your default. Then we have a red mask and a green mask. So the red mask is for a slightly lighter concrete. And then the green mask is for the kind of powdery concrete. So all we did is we just used Megascans for their library of awesome scan data. 
And we did very simple compositing tricks to basically just layer those in together. So we can easily layer in two different types of concrete, one dark, dark and lighter, and then a powdery one for where the edge wear happened. And because, like I said before, the materials are kind of loaded with roughness, metallicness, and normals, we can just composite them all in one shot and get the final result. So a couple of different assets were textured this way. So the main lava pit road was done that, this way. Very simple. Um, in this case, we actually had the chroma key node, which is kind of done for pulling out keys in a compositing shot. We just used it as basically a material selector um, that we can pull out different uh, material layers from a, a mask ID type deal. Yeah, so very easily we can just layer in some predefined materials and get our final textures generated. Another one that we tried to do was uh, with the terrains. So we can extract lots of different great data from the simulation. So we can get things like the debris paths. We can do things of based on slope, based on height, based on peaks and valleys. And then we just use scops to mix those channels together and generate masks. So this is what they look like by just combining them together and then feeding red, green, and blue into different parts of the, the masks. And then this is what it looks like in game with the mega scan tiling textures applied to it. So fairly straightforward workflow, but it's a, it's an area that of Houdini that's been around forever and a lot of people just aren't aware of it. So I just wanted to kind of share some lights on it. So the pros and cons here is that it's fast uh, because it's texture based. Um, there's a lot of built-in functionality already based on just cops being around forever. It's a common workflow that people understand and it's easy to kind of play in with SOPs and terrain and kind of get data to send back and forth. Cons is that it's texture based. So you do need a game mesh and UVs. So for that reason, we also wanted to look into a more traditional kind of film way of doing texturing with materials. So in this case, we're just texturing the high res object, not the game res object. So in, in our specific case, we didn't need UVs. We didn't need anything. We were texturing uh, the ship on, uh, I think, straight from ZBrush, around a 5 million poly mesh. And the idea here is there's a lot of that workflow of people doing look dev on the ZBrush models. So we wanted to see if we could do the look dev and then also bake that out as your final result. So a primer for materials, again, it's very simple. Um, a lot of the same concepts where you have um, just basically two shaders that you can blend together um, using a layer mix. In this example in particular, we use the rounded edge shader to basically give us a mask of where curvatures and um, edge wear would expect to happen. And then we're just using that to blend between two different materials. Um, and really the, the secret of materials inside of Houdini is really two nodes. Um, there's a dirt mask node, which gives us this kind of ambient occlusion and where dirt would accumulate. And then a rounded edge masks, which gives us um, kind of like a curvature where you would expect edge wear to happen. But you can take that to a next level, and this is something that Magnus did, to where you can just keep pushing it, and we can do things like figure out a convex hole around the object and determine exactly where edge wear should happen. So instead of being in every single little corner, it's really where edge wear would happen naturally. And again, the nice thing is that because you don't have to worry about UVs, um, you can just keep working on the high res, and as your up model gets updated, you don't really need to update anything, just the, the materials kind of fall into place. So let's look at the ship itself, how we did that. Um, and then the, the kind of the key here was using the mega scan imperfections. So these are relatively new and they're just awesome kind of grunge maps to use because the materials that we use are very simple. They're just kind of painted metal and chrome and really, really simple, simple materials. But the, the where it looks really nice is having all those little edge wares and all the little finesse details that we're getting from the, these imperfection maps. So what we did is we brought in the vertex colors from ZBrush and we can pull out the masks from them because we have the vertex colors right on the model. So we very easily, we made a, a color selector inside of the material editor to be able to pull out the different masks. And then based on those masks, we just do the traditional things that you would expect with the rounded edge shader, just random noise, and then multiplying those together and kind of playing with a, a combination of masks, edge selection, and noise to get exactly what we wanted to. So in this case, you can see how the material for the ship body itself was generated and here we can see a breakdown of what the textures look like so we get a really clean albedo metallic roughness and bump map 
And here is another cool thing is that we can actually use the Mantra renderer, which is a film grade renderer that we have built into Houdini to do basically look dev. So as I'm kind of playing with it, I can figure out exactly where my, my edge wear is going to go. What does it look like? I can preview it before I bake it down into the game res. So when I'm ready to kind of commit to it, um, we can use that pipeline that I also showed with where you can automatically decimate everything, generate UVs, and then use the simple baker to transfer the, all the material information from the high res down into the game res. So here we have a direct comparison of what it looked like in Mantra and what it looks like inside of Unreal. And for the most part, it's pretty close. There's a couple of different things on mainly the, the roughness um, takes a little bit of fudging to get it to look the same. But for the most part, you can get the mask straight across. And the nice thing too is that you can use it to just upload it to Sketchfab um, with a new Sketchfab uploader as well. So you can see something on a film level render on a 5 million poly and then something that I think was around 20,000 polys, 4K textures on it. And it, it holds up to where all of the detail that you got on the film quality starting to get on even on a kind of web browser. So the pros here is that there's no UVs requirements. There's no game reses. You're previewing it at a high quality. So it's almost resolution independent because you're not baking things. Um, we can use straight planar projections, which is fairly straightforward and kind of, kind of common at this point. And we can also use 3D geometry based effects. So we can do things like figure out the convex hull of the geo or any other kind of 3D operations. Then we can sample data straight from the mesh itself. And so we're not limited to only vertex colors. We can just take any attribute that we want to stick on the mesh and pull that across to the materials. Um, it is slower because you have to kind of do a full render as opposed to just kind of be able to see it, the, the texture compositing happen at the real time. Um, there's some 2D operations that are very easy to do as a texture, like blurring, that are harder to do on a 3D model. And the other con is that it's different. Besides the kind of high-res previsualization stuff, kind of the look dev film workflows, not a lot of games people really work this way. So it is a little bit of a, a mind shift if you wanted to try this out. So overview of the talk, we kind of gave a quick idea of what Brimstone was. I'm hoping to do a lot more talks there. We went through compositing based approach using COPS. We went through material based approach using MAT. And now if you have any questions, you can drop me a line on the comment section. And I wanted to thank Mike Pavlovich for doing an awesome job on the ship and everybody at Quixel for uh, helping us out with the Megascan library and Victor with helping us out during the game production. So thank you. Uh, my email is Louise at SideFX, L-U-I-Z at SideFX.com. So um, hope this was useful.